Alrighty, so let's do a thing. <clears throat> this is, uh, I have to time this, make sure I don't go past a certain amount. I think it's 15 minutes since I got my limitation here. So let's get this going. How to do this, this, this stuff. So when, uh, I wanna actually go through this really kind of uh, on a high level. When, uh, when you're doing head construction, and uh, you have to first ask yourself, what's the purpose? So actually, let me just go up here. Uh, you know, are you, what are your goals here? Um, you know, if you're doing, are you doing cartoony? Are you doing thumbnails? Are you doing a, a high quality illustration? <clears throat> what your end goal is highly impacts how you should be building this head. If you are a very stylistic artist, or you have a style that you're very comfortable with and you can draw the shapes over and over again, no problem. You know, if you're, then you, then you do those little shapes you use to build those things, you know, that's what you, where you're going to, where you're going to go with all that. Um, what I'm going to just kind of show you today is some of the steps and tips I've used, figured out so far. And by God, I am not good at heads. There are people who are m much more gifted at faces and heads than I am. Um, and this is, I feel something that they may have it more innately. I have this hard time kind of um, getting all the features in the right spot and all the spacing and getting really good expressions. I mean, I can get to them, but they don't come naturally as I've seen other people really kind of tap into it. And I think that has to do almost directly with uh directly with people uh, how much you care about a head and how much you care about faces and how much you want to do something it almost always ties into that i care more about anatomy and i just tend to be get better results on anatomy but as soon as i get to the heads it's kind of a uh, a slug fest slug fest <laughs> it's like a party for slugs uh i have to slug it out i think is the expression i was looking for so what that means is uh, I have to kind of rely, I think, more strongly. I've been always kind of uh, circumventing this for the longest time because I always felt that, uh, you know, I didn't really need to, to follow any kind of really hard rules. But I, it's come to my attention that I, I think I would really benefit from kind of structuring myself a little more. So I'm going to go actually on the right hand here and show you kind of, and this is an in, in, in really my process as a, as a core, but it's pretty, it's along these lines. So here's what happens. And this actually I think happens with a lot of people. And I think this is the whole crosshair or circle and crosshair method where it really fails. It gives you some good results, but it kind of fails in a lot of other things. So people start with the head, with the sphere, they draw the circle, and then, you know, they just build on that. You know, they build this, they build, they build this or they build this they build different like constructions based on this this thing so they'll find you know, the the cross or this or they'll find this shape here or they'll they'll build a assets off of this thing but i really feel the sphere is a really kind of a high level skill i think you should be going to the sphere when you really have a strong grasp of what you're doing you, you can draw like a sphere, like a like a volume shape. I think a volume shape is actually much better. If you're like, oh, I know the head kind of looks like this, and I'm gonna set the features on it. I think that's safer for beginner artists and um, intermediate artists than building this sphere and doing all this. And let me just show you why, because as okay as these results are I actually struggle more and they just kind of reminded me of what I'm always dealing with when I'm drawing and then I decided to start attempting to do a box and then sphere and this is where it kind of just came a lot clearer to me excuse me I'm gonna sneeze sorry <clears throat> so what that means is I got a sphere I got a box here I draw the sphere and, um, you know, I want to, uh, I draw the sphere inside and then I got, actually here you have a, a, a even more exaggerated, not exaggerated, more, uh, 
explicit version of this that has even more measures. I don't think I'd need this unless I had some really specific stuff, but to do or some uh, hard angles. But with this, I find that I can easily put the sphere in, and I know I'm always going to need a little space at the bottom because that's, and I have a good idea of what that space is just innately. I know that if I draw a, 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 a circular shape inside this rectangle, uh, instead of this volume, I know that it, it's going to be generally okay if I just, just, you know, what that is is probably like a fourth or whatever. But I'm not, I don't have a problem with this. With this, you know, I know that I don't know what that space is. I don't know where that space is, where, where I'm going to draw that line, what that volume is. But with this one, I don't have to care because I, I immediately know that if it's around this relationship, if it's this quarter relationship, is it a quarter? It's about maybe a fifth or a quarter. If it's about this, then I'm more comfortable. Whereas in this scenario, I don't really have those measures. Once I've got this going down, then I can actually do a lot of construction very quickly and know I'm doing things all right. Since I can now split this head, this front face properly, I have a better, now of course the sphere and this are really gonna be lined up. Actually, this is probably gonna be a little more forward, but I can kind of compensate now. And then here you can see actually I did a, an adjustment. Uh, I did this and then I looked away and I went back and I immediately was like, yeah, you know, really I should <laughs> fill the whole shape. Here I drew a sphere to show, you know, if I drew a sphere, then I can go down to this process. Here I was just trying to eyeball it, just trying to carve it out of the box shape to get a good, decent, uh, to get my volumes without having to draw the sphere. So you can, you don't have to draw the sphere once you've got this box shape down. Um, and you can do your easy corrections. Like, I mean, I, I should have drawn this all the way. I just didn't because I was like, oh, you know, probably it stops early. And you know, some people have flatter heads, so it might be fine. But now that I've got the shape and I know a few rules, one of the rules is that at the middle of the head and the back, the ear starts. So this ear is better placed. Uh, I also know that, you know, this middle thing is where the eyes are going to be. The middle of this box is going to be eyes is going to be. A lot of things get all, all very clear all of a sudden and easy for me to read. Uh, you know, and then and then I'm not really struggling. I'm just kind of chiseling out shapes that are, that, that are very kind of easy to pick up. Um, here I have a more exaggerated shape. So here I've like drawn the cross section because I'm trying to find my centers. I want to be hyper accurate. And this might actually be very useful when you're doing exaggerated perspective. Uh, so I'm drawing kind of the shape and I'm saying, okay, I know I'm drawing where I know specifically that this is exactly where I want. I want exactly quarter mark uh, for the mouth. I draw my sphere and then I can literally just go down and draw more shapes into this uh, highly detailed thing that I know where all my, my landmarks are being hit. Uh, and at this point, you know, I'm not having to really struggle as much. And we're going to talk a little bit later in a bit, actually very soon because I'm running out of time already. Uh, I'm going to have to do this a two-parter. Uh, and then, of course, do, like like I want you to guys understand, I mean, that construction is to benefit you. It needs to do two things. <clears throat> it needs to get you out of trouble, not get you into trouble. It needs to be reliable. Okay, and really, ideally, the less lines with the most reliable results is what you want. The least amount of time you're constructing the head and the more consistent and reliable results. And it's kind of weird because I see a lot of time in my own art and other people, they, they, they create these systems that, that can't solve a problem. And by solving, I mean it should solve it without you having to use your perception, right? If <clears throat> this is why there's measures in anatomy, I think. Uh, you know, I, I'm not a big believer in everything needs to be. I mean, if you see my style, you'll know that I break it often. But um, you know, if you know that an arm, you know, the muscle for the the muscle part of an arm is in the first two thirds of a thing, and you know, you can't do this wrong. This is a measure you can't screw up. You can't eyeball it and go, oh, well, you know, I think it should be this, and I think it should be this. You know, if you know that it's pretty consistently this is the spacing of what the forearm muscle is, uh, then you can't really mess that up. 
right? And that's kind of where the where, uh, same thing for actually uh, arms. I know that if you, you can't really, you can barely touch the top of your shoulder. So I know that if I make an arm and I make draw a hand, the, 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 the measures, the length of the arm, the forearm or the upper arm has to be just enough so the top of the fingers can touch the top of the shoulder. Uh, this is a poor looking thing, but you get the idea. Like, I know that that's my measure now because if the character can put the hand on top, then that arm's too long. And if they can't reach it, or it's too, sh it's too short, but I know if they can do that, then I know that that measure, that's a proper uh, amount of distance for this versus this. And that's kind of what drawing ends up being because memorizing every single anatomical landmark is not going to get you anywhere. Um, uh, so really, I think you can do yourself a disservice uh, with just assuming that, hey, I draw a sphere, I draw this, and this is how I'm going to do it every time, and that's going to get me out of it's going to do the thing I need. But I actually feel that if you don't consciously think about what you're doing here, and there are times, man, especially for profile, because all the, one of the hardest things I have is forward, front, front of the face, because all the, 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 the distances, all the, sorry, not the distance, but all the, um, topography is all squished like there's not you're dealing with differences instead of you know the, the the difference between the eye and the nose is this much when you're looking at it from the front there's like you're you're smashing these these that distance into this uh, con high concept of like well I can't really show the dis difference of how far the nose is from the eyes but I can show there's a shadow giving the illusion that and then if I put a shadow up here over the eyes, then the eyes look sunk in. So then that gives that concept or perception that the eyes are deeper in and the nose is further out. And I mean, that's kind of a crazy concept in its own right. So you need to kind of find things that, that help you, um, that consistently get you out of trouble. Or uh, if, you know, I'll tell you what, I'd rather draw, you know, this, I, I'm, the more I think of it, the more I rather draw. I rather draw these lines here, these straight lines. It's boring, you know. And maybe later on, I'll never need these. I'd rather draw these lines that I know are reliable. I know how to draw a straight line. <laughs> As I draw crooked lines, I know what a straight line looks like, you know. And I, I have tools that can help make me give me straight lines. Drawing a circle and then pulling a shape off of the circle. That is not something I'm comfortable with. Uh, and it's not reliable because a curved line and curved shapes are just not a easy to measure, uh, quickly easy to measure concept that you can always reliably draw every single time. But here I can just draw a rectangle, sorry, uh, a kind of a rectangular volume. And then when I know it's the right length, like I can, I can get used to how what my um, how tall it should be and it'd be like oh yeah it should probably be this one the head will fit in right here and that's the space you know if it's about at least a quarter then it's good if it's a fifth or a quarter the bottom of the sphere is then we're, we're doing good um, so that's kind of the first thing I wanted to talk about is just this idea and then I mean at some point you know I might be able to just get to a level where I can just draw the the red parts here, right? I can just draw this. I don't. I can visualize. I have a really good understanding of what this shape is, and then I can just do this, and I know how to build everything else off of it, based on how I know. But to get all these shapes consistent every time is going to be very difficult for me. Um, so I'm actually a proponent. If you're just really trying to understand where all the all your shapes are, especially if you're trying a style that's more realistic. And you're trying to do all various characters and you're trying to make sure that they're all uh, consistent looking it's gonna be very hard for you uh, when you're starting up to try to stylistically modify that 